Welcome back to Network Africa. Well, just before we took that break, we told you that the Tanzanian President John Magufuli has revealed his monthly salary, which is 9 million Tanzanian shillings, and that's about $4,000 per month. Well, to talk more about this, we have a lecturer at the Department of Philosophy at the University of Lagos, Dr. Dan Ekere. Glad to have you on the program, Dr. Dan. Thank you for having me. So transparency seems to have been taken to another level in Tanzania with the president declaring how much he actually earns per month. How do you see this action? I think that's a positive development and I think uh, it is uh, something every country should emulate. But generally speaking, I, 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 so far it has been said that uh, the Tanzanian president has been very transparent, somewhat honest, to the extent that uh, no form of fraudulent activity has been linked, you know, to him. And uh, so far, we've not seen this in Africa. You know, we've always had presidents, even legislators, you don't know what they, they earn. Presidents don't even know what they earn, and let alone the president himself. And I think uh, this is something that every country, in Africa in particular, should pursue. And it, it, it is something that the citizenry should actually take as a responsibility upon themselves, so that we pressurize the leadership. Let's know what you are earning from what we have as a people, because you, what you earn is from our taxes. It's not from your father's company. So we should be able to know what you are getting from the common purse, so that we'll be able to, I mean, place, you know, whatever you have. When you go beyond your resources, your income, we will know. When you begin to eat deep into the country's resources, we will also know. But as it stands at the moment, I think Nigeria is one of the worst when it comes to you know, uh, transparency of this kind. Nobody knows how much each of the legislators... Well, we're going, to get, we're going to get to that in just a moment. But before then, let's talk about uh, the salary, which is about $4,000, and it's uh, believed to be the lowest among its counterparts in Africa. Are there any lessons to be learned from this? So many lessons. Because one is that you need to look at the economy of a state before you begin to, you know, talk about, you know, what each person, each, you know, public officer should, should earn, es essentially those who are elected. Because these are not lifetime positions. These are not pensionable positions. These are positions that you hold for, a, a, you know, a, a term or two, and you are out of it, all right? So it should be an office for service. It's not the same thing like, you know, a career job that you want to do to earn a living kind of. This is something that your mind, your spirit, your body would have told you, look, you need to render service to them. They are called, you know, uh, servants. Political office holders are supposed to be serving the people. You know, but in serving the people, there must be some level of sacrifice to be made. And that has to do with even what you take, you know, what you earn from that service. But it is not the case everywhere. And I think that... Uh, Tazina is showing an example to the entire Africa continent from this particular, you know, uh, exercise. So, do you advise other African leaders to? You of know, course, of course. I, I think that has, in fact, here in Nigeria, it has been an issue. You know, you remember Professor Isisage coming out to say that this is what each senator earns, this is what each member of the House of Reps earns, and there have been, you know, issues here and there. The senators and the rest will tell you go to the wages salary and wages commission and. The, what stops you from just saying, this is what I am? The president, this is the president we're talking about, not a minister, not a senator, not anything less. The number one citizen of the country has said that this is what I am. And I expect that that should be the case. So that, because sometimes they make claims that people make demands on them. Why won't we make demands on you when your salary, your, your income is so opaque? Nobody knows what you get. And from your lifestyle, it suggests that you are getting so much. So... There will always be that need for people to make demands on you. But if I am I'm aware that you earn so little, I will not be asking for so much from you. And I think that is one thing that we need to, you know, imbibe from this particular practice on this particular, you know, uh, part of the, the continent. Because Nigeria in particular, this is a critical issue that is creating a lot of problems. Because I cannot imagine that you throw a question to a senator, for instance, the, the spokesman of the Senate, how much do you, I remember, you know, Sheikh Okibalo asking him, uh, what's the name, uh, is this Sabi or something, the senator? Yes, with due respect. Now, a simple question was asked, how much do you earn? And the next thing is, you go ask the wages commission. But do they have to reveal how much, you know? What is wrong with that? What is wrong with it? Why do you think that, you know, they have to uh, 
tell us how much they earn. Yeah, you know why they have to tell us what they earn? Because so far, it has been said that the National Assembly, for instance, you know, has been having all manner of allowances and the rest of it. And the simplest way to solve that problem is to say, this is what I have. I don't have all the things you are saying. And in any case, these are public office holders, elected. These are not regular, you know, uh, civil servants. Even the regular civil servants, their salaries are known. Each cadre will know how much each person gets. But so far, the political office holders, nobody knows how much they have. And I, this is public form, for God's sake. We need to know. We need to have so, build confidence. We need to build trust. And what the Tanzanian president has just done is one sure way of building confidence. Because you are simply telling the world that this is what I'm worth. I'm, I'm not more than this. So that you don't begin to think that when you get to this office after me, then you'll be looking you know, for so much. And I think that this is something that we must encourage our leaders, we must encourage our political office holders to do. Without that, they will keep siphoning money without anybody knowing. And we equally need to you know, find ways and means of ensuring that it is not just done once, but that every other person who comes on board does the same thing. Without that, we continue to lose resources in ways that we cannot trace. And in any case, how do you even discuss national activities without being able to... Because I remember during uh, President Basso's just uh, tenure, he couldn't even tell how much any of the senators was earning. As a president of the country, you don't know how much those who work with you are earning. It, it's shocking. And I think it's ridiculous, really. And we will uh, keep our eyes on that and see if eventually they'll come up to tell us how much they earn. But thank you very much, a Senior Lecturer at the Department of Philosophy, University of Lagos, Dr. Danny Curry, for coming on Network Africa. Thank you. It's a pleasure. So was mine. Now, uh, Kenyan opposition coalition NASA says the changes it insists are necessary to ensure a free and fair rerun of the presidential election this month is it's, uh, necessary. Well, last month, the Supreme Court annulled the presidential poll, citing irregularities. The opposition wants key electoral officials sacked as part of several measures it says are necessary for a credible vote. A NASA spokesperson, James Orengo, called on the coalition supporters to demonstrate on Friday and previous protests have broken up by the security forces. The Electoral Commission, which also met with the Government Jubilee Party, says it has made progress. In the UK, Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson has been criticized for his recent comments on Libya at a fringe meeting at the Government Conservative Party's annual conference in Manchester. According to Boris, the Libyan city of Sirte could be the new Dubai, and all they have to do is clear the dead bodies away. The main opposition party, Labour, has called the comments crass, callous, and true. Well, Network Africa returns in a moment with more stories. Uh, please stay with us. <laughs>